Mutual parasite removal, or as they call it, a tick for a tat, is a daily hygiene behavior of primates. Unlike when people remove ticks, monkeys get the added bonus of a little protein. White-faced capuchins, or white-throated capuchins, are common monkeys throughout Costa Rica in both primary and secondary forests up to 3,000 meters. They absolutely need trees and live in groups of up to 30 individuals. This species is restricted to the New World tropics, but it is often seen in movies that take place in Africa or Asia. It seems that people in Hollywood have no training in ecology. In this group rub, white-faced capuchins are using citrus as an insect repellent, arguably a case of tool use. Capuchins have also been seen rubbing themselves with other plants, even with ants and millipedes. These diurnal, prehensile-tailed monkeys have a female-bonded social organization where the females stay in the group while the young males have to leave the group. This only happens in two New World monkey species, but is common in the Old World primates. There is a clear hierarchy among females that is maintained by constant contact and conversations. The diet of capuchins is varied, but consists primarily of fruit and insects, which depends on habitat and availability. Generally, fruit is more than half their diet. Here, they are closely checking the fiddlewood fruits for ripeness. They tend to spit out large seeds, but smaller seeded tree species are dispersed by them. Other foods include flowers of anthuriums and shoots of bromeliads. And, like the Andean bears, they like the base of the bromeliads too. Although a large male coati is feeding on the fiddlewood fruits right next to the capuchins, they are not friends. In fact, capuchins are known to kill and eat baby coatis. Capuchins are so opportunistic, they have been observed taking bites from the tails of iguanas and even nibbling on silky anteaters that are in torpor. That's bizarre. Despite a lot of screaming, white-faced capuchin males get along better with others in the group compared to other capuchin species in South America. Old and young males even cooperate to drive off predators. Curiously, the dominant male may not be the oldest, nor the one that mates with all the females. In terms of the organizational chart, there is the dominant male, a real jerk, usually followed by the dominant female, and then the beta male and beta female. With a little patience, one can figure out who is who by their behavior in the group. Groups of monkeys are called troops, and a troop of white-faced capuchins needs between 30 and 160 hectares of forest to survive. If you watch carefully, you may notice that males spend more time closer to the ground, and this may explain why they tend to be more carnivorous. Capuchins are very long-lived, over 40 years in captivity, for example. Dry season is when the young are born, usually one baby per female. They hang on to mom for five to six months, then have to learn those jumps, leaps, and falls all by themselves. 
Interestingly, females reach sexual maturity after four years and males at eight years. And then the females only have a baby about every other year on the average. This is why the country is not overrun with monkeys. All kinds of insects are eaten, and capuchins look everywhere, especially in leaves for caterpillars and the like. No luck for him, though. These monkeys don't like dogs, and will break off branches to throw at any potential danger, or break them just above the problem. Many a tourist has been clobbered by a falling branch from an angry capuchin, and they are also known to hurl their own excrement if they really don't like you. It's better to drink up here than down there by that dog. In the protected areas of Costa Rica, capuchins provide a good show for tourists who generate a great deal of evolutionary compassion. A clean monkey is a happy monkey.